When our fellow Helldivers are pinned down and crying out for liberty herself, we'll be there to answer that call with 84 millimeters of armor-piercing freedom. Welcome back to the SCS Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and today we're going to be looking at what the recoilless rifle can do against the bots when we pair up with at least one other random squad mate and give them that danger close fire support. This weapon has a few tricks up its sleeve that make it a real contender with other more popular options like the auto cannon or the anti-material rifle. It does have some limitations, but I'm going to show you all how to overcome those and effectively support your team all the way to the win. If you're used to fighting the bugs, this loadout should be familiar enough that you can rely on those same instincts and take out those big heavy targets before they get to your team. Now that you know what the video is about, let's drop in and scrap some bots. Before we get into exactly how we'll be supporting our teammates, let's quickly go over the loadout. Here's our full kit. I'll be going over each element as we go through the mission, but I do want to give some attention right off the bat to our support weapon, primary, and our choice of grenades. I built this loadout with the recoilless rifle in mind, since I know I can rely on it to take out anything bigger than a devastator. The rest of our loadout is geared towards offsetting the weaknesses of the recoilless, so that means our primary and our stratagems need to be able to handle large groups of enemies but specifically Scout Striders and Devastators. Plasma and Scorcher handles these enemies real well because of its accuracy and explosive trait. Being an explosive weapon means it does real good damage to the weak spots of the bots, while its versatility is going to be really important for helping us handle all of the various threats that the bots have. That said, you could easily replace it with the Plasma Punisher, which I think is the best weapon in the game against the bots, or the Plasma Purifier. You could also use the Jar 5, but I think that weapon's a bit overrated and kind of difficult to use effectively. We also don't need its medium pen penetration since we have the recoilless rifle. Last but certainly not least, we have our stun grenades for setting up those big hits with our eagle airstrikes and our orbital gas strike. Just one to two stuns buys you enough time to call on these weapons to wreak havoc on the bot menace. Alright, now that y'all know the loadout, let's talk about how we're going to be using it to effectively support our team. For those of you that are new to my channel, I like to inject a healthy dose of cooperation and team play into my games with random squad mates. The game's just so much easier when you use basic cooperation and actively try to help your squad whenever possible. If you've been struggling with the lower difficulties, know that I make these videos with you in mind. Once you understand how to help your team out of tight spots, you'll have a much easier time taking on the higher difficulties. That said, our main objectives for this mission are going to be pick a teammate and support them against any heavy armor that pops up. This can mean moving with the pack or splitting off and supporting another teammate as they take out objectives. The next one's going to be using pings to communicate effectively. If you like using voice comms, that's even better, but pinging is a skill that all Helldivers should strive to develop. I even learned a new trick with pings in this game and I'll point it out when it happens. Last on our list of objectives is going to be to cover our battle buddy. We're going to be doing that with our orbital gas strikes, stun grenades, and eagles. We're equipped to handle any threat that might pop up, but we need to be aware of where our teammates are when we're tossing stratagems. This is a danger close loadout, so try and avoid hitting your squad and adding them to the wall of martyrs. Alright, now that we've covered those three things, and I want y'all to keep those in mind as we're playing the game, because I'm going to be pointing them out as we go through it. But now S3 and I have arrived at the first primary objective. I personally don't think this is a great idea to do the primary with just the two of us, but he wants to do it, so I'm going to do it with him. That means I'm going to take out my recoilless and set up for these drop ships. They come in, I shoot the first one down before I load another one in the chamber. I'm not going to be able to take out that second one before it drops its bots, so I'm just going to get out of here and let S3 uh, deal with it with stratagems. I see he throws an eagle, so I don't want to throw another one. I throw my orbital gas instead. He goes for the primary, trying to hit the button to make it, you know, complete the objective. So I'm going to cover him as best I can. He manages to do it somehow in the field of freaking bots. But with, those eagle, with that one eagle from me, the orbital gas, and his one eagle, we took out the entire primary objective, just two of us. And if y'all watched the last video, you know that these ore extraction missions can be pretty darn tough if you're not prepared for them. But we both seem to know what we're doing, and we were able to handle it without any issue. I covered my battle buddy as best I could, and he was able to get the primary done without any problems. He pings to the next objective, I give him the affirmative, and I follow suit. Here, I went to go explore some points of interest that were around, because I noticed that S3 was just going to go chunk an eagle at a small outpost. I don't need to help him with that, he's going to be able to handle it with just that one eagle airstrike. So I'm going to go look to clear the way of anything that might be a problem, 
on our way to the next objective. I take out that hell bomb just in case there's any enemies around it and just get it out of the way. But then, as I'm kind of looking at my map and deciding where to go, I notice a freaking patrol right in front of my face. So I chuck out that stun grenade, try to throw the eagle, didn't have any, toss out a gas track and another stun grenade. There's no cover around me other than this tiny little rock, so I just hit behind it as best I can and I start firing. This is going to get S3's attention, and with that last stun grenade, you see the auto cannon fire coming in from the left. So he's also covering me, just like I was covering him. He saw that those enemies were shooting at me, he knew he was uh, good to go, won't be uh, disrupted in his fire, so he took him out. And we're able to head towards that mortar pit that started firing at us while we were taking out that patrol. He throws out a 500 kg, and I just kind of follow him around. I don't want to be near that when it goes off. But I notice it didn't take out the mortar pit completely, so I know there's at least one more mortar in here. So I look for it while the little bots are distracted with him, take it out in one hit. We clean the rest of them up real quick, but now I get to tell you all a little bit of a trick with the recoilless rifle. I only played two games with this weapon, but I kind of fell in love with it. It's really effective. But this is one of the tricks you can do. You can break up the reload animation so you can kind of reload on the move. I tested it out later. It doesn't shorten the reload time. It actually kind of lengthens it by two seconds. But what it does do is allow you to break that reload up into parts. So if you're under a lot of pressure, you can yank the shell out, pull out your primary, run away, get behind some better cover, put the shell in, pull the primary back out, and you're good to go. So if you're worried about the recoilless rifle kind of limiting your mobility, that's a nice little trick to kind of help alleviate some of that pain. Because, you know, you can just cancel the animation, get behind cover, and finish it. It just makes it real simple. And being able to carry nine shells just means you're the bane of all heavy armor. You barely ever run out of ammo, and you don't got to be all that accurate. You know, if you're shooting a Hulk, just shoot him twice in the chest, once in the eye, or hit him in the leg and then hit him in the eye. There's a lot of options we can work with. Now here off in the distance I see a tower, and this is a good chance to show you all how the recoilless works against these bigger targets. It doesn't do enough damage to kill them in one hit, but that's why we have the Scorcher. Just a few shots from our primary, augments our support weapon, takes out these big targets. If you all have liked learning about the recoilless rifle so far, then consider liking the video. It helps me out a lot and encourages the voting algorithm to spread the word of cooperation and team play. If you want to see more content like this, consider checking out my other videos or subscribing to the channel. Together we can beat back the bot menace to whatever neglected scrapyard they crawled out of. Speaking of working together, S3 and I have dealt with most of these fabricators. The Eagle Airstrike takes the last of them out and I go deal with that lone one off in the distance before we move on to the next objective. Now after I chunk an eagle at it, I hear the screams of S3 in the distance like they're being set on fire. And guess what? They were. There's a Hulk chasing them. But the Hulk's way too close for me to take a shot with the recoilless, and S3 is able to handle it by themselves anyway. So, while they get recovered up, I'm going to push forward and deal with all these little guys that were giving them trouble. I ping that rocket devastator off in the distance so he knows I'm going to fire at it, and he gets in a good position to support me. So we find that standing on top of this little junk heap is going to work pretty well for dealing with the rest of these enemies. So we work together by taking turns coming up here, firing off our weapons, backing off and reloading. I hope you all can see that this kind of wordless communication, it works wonders. Like, we're able to take turns as our weapons are empty, the other one pops back up, gets line of sight and takes things out. And we just kind of play off of each other without needing to really talk. And this is what I'm really trying to drive home for y'all, that just through using pings and covering your teammates, they will usually notice that you're helping them. Like right here, I noticed he got blasted by something, I saw it was that Hulk, so I took him out. These little acts of kindness or these little acts of support really drive up trust with your teammates and it just makes the game so much easier. We've managed to go through an entire side of the map and took out every other objective, but there is still an anti-air emplacement here and I notice it's kind of close to my other teammates G2 and P4. Anti-air can be real annoying because pretty much everybody brings eagles because eagles are amazing. So I know I need to take this out before S3 and I can do that primary. And you notice he followed me. You remember that in the first primary he just started it right away, kind of was just playing by himself. But now he was like, oh, anti-air emplacement, that's a good idea. I'll go help him out. So we take this out together and then we're going to go back and deal with the primary objective. I'm going to go scout out for ammo, but once I'm satisfied that, you know, there's I've collected all the samples and stuff, we're going to go regroup up and do that primary together. But before I do that, I managed to get scared out of my shoes, y'all, because I'm running towards S3 and I almost step on that mine. 
I don't know how I avoided it. I credit my lizard brain because there's no way I noticed that in time. But I was able to avoid it, not die, ruin my deathless run, and go back to try to regroup with S3. But he did start up that primary objective, and there's a bunch of patrols and stuff around, so I'm not in a good position to help him. I'm getting shot from every angle. I try to run. There's a hulk in the way. I'm getting blasted all to hell, and I'm just not in a good spot. So I have to just abandon S3 for now, hope they're going to be okay, and just run away until I can get better situated to go back in and help. I reload all my weapons, but I'm desperately out of ammo. And I don't like throwing a resupply just for myself, but I have one mag of my Scorcher. I have, I think, one rocket left, and I've got no stems and no grenades, maybe one. But I, I, I desperately need this. So I throw out the resupply as close to the primary as I can, but I didn't notice that 380, so I'm kind of hesitant to go for it. But because I'm in such a desperate need, I just make a break for it. I'm grabbing this up because I can't go back and help out S3 if I have no supplies, y'all. So I try to remember where this is because I really want my team to benefit from it. But I don't think it's going to happen right now. And once I see that rocket volley go across my head, I know that that devastator is going to hit me on the next volley. So I got to move. I got to relocate. So I get on this other side of this cover. But I'm about to notice there's quite a few more enemies than I was expecting. One of my teammates asked for supplies, so I ping in the general direction where I dropped them, but I, I don't really know where there are. There's laser beams, there's rockets everywhere. It, it's chaos, y'all. So sometimes this happens, it's okay. I see this big-ass patrol up here, bot drop, whatever it is. So I throw a stun at it. I don't have any stratagems up, so I'm not going to be able to really kill it right now, but I want to take some of the pressure off of my team because it looks like P4 and S3 are on the other side there, and D2's hanging way back. So... If I can get the aggro onto me, it's going to help them out even though I can't immediately kill these things. Because I need to play with my team, y'all. If I just try to selfishly play this game, it's not going to work. This game is meant to be played with other people. So I shoot at them real quick, and then I haul ass back into the forest trying to get break line of sight, keep their attention on me, and hopefully they'll come towards me. Now I hope y'all saw that ping from G2 back there, because that's going to be important. This is the trick I was talking about. You see G2's health, they are very, very low. And they keep pinging and asking for supplies. It takes me too long to notice, but I eventually catch on and I haul over to them, and I, no I finally notice how low their health is. They call for supplies, so I stem them up. And this is that trick I was talking about. If you're just low health and you need help immediate, or you know, you need help, park yourself behind some good cover, tell your, ping where you are, and tell your team I need supplies. It, hopefully they'll catch on. I only recognized this after he did it, I think, twice. But I think it's still a good tip to at least try in your games if you find yourself in that situation. We've made it to extraction, but you notice that uh, P4 and S3 are, are not here yet, and they're both really low. So I called in the resupply, and S3 was able to go get his stuff back and kind of, you know, get back in the fight effectively. Which, by the way, I just want to mention that both S3 and D2 also went deathless this run. So we had three divers that never died once in a hell dive run because we were both paired off with another hell diver. That just made it a lot easier. S3 also has got some really solid skills and they were able to survive situations I really don't think I could have. But now that we're at extraction, let's talk a little strategy. So with extraction, the idea is, I actually learned this from one of my commenters, so thank you for that. And also, if any of y'all notice any mistakes in my videos, or you, if you notice I get something wrong, please correct me in the comments. I don't have an ego with this kind of stuff. I'm always trying to learn. So if you know something I don't, please educate me, because I just want to be the best held ever I can. But what I learned is that patrols will spawn either from, when you call an extraction, they'll either spawn from the nearest fabricator or bug hole, or if those are not available, they'll spawn from the nearest edge of the map. This actually makes it pretty easy to know where the bots are going to come from. So you see, like, we cleared up everything that was chasing P4 and S3 on the way here, and now everything is spawning in this direction. And that's because the edge of the map is off to the east there. So while there might be a few stragglers trickling in from the other side, I know most of the threat is going to be coming through that one little funnel right there. So that means it's real easy for me to decide how I need to play this out. If I see a Hulk, I'm shooting at it. If I see a tank, I'm hitting it with the recoilless. But I'm really just going to be using my primaries, my secondaries, and my stratagems to just buy as much time as I can. So you see here, I'm out of ammo with everything, so I find a good spot to reload. I hear that 380 way too close to me, so I know that's not a good spot to stay. I relocate over here with D2. 
and I start giving them a little bit of cover fire while we all get situated. I do double back just to make sure that nothing's behind us, and I see the orbital laser kind of moving around. That means that it's targeting stuff, so I'm going to throw out an orbital gas track just to create a little bit of a wall. I do a quick visual check, make sure I didn't miss anything, because I don't want a Hulk busting in from behind us and barbecuing us while we're looking in the other direction. But as soon as I know it's safe, I go back to that funnel in the east with S3 and D2, and we just hold it down until extraction happens. You'll see here that S3 backs off, and that's my cue to move forward, because he's either reloading or out of ammo or something's going on. So I need to step up, take his position, I see the sample, grab that up, but I notice there's not really any more enemies, and I hear that auto cannon fire behind me, and it looks like he's not having much luck with hitting the Hulk. So I'm just going to fire off two quick shots that's going to take the Hulk out, uh, along with a lot of auto cannon from S3. And we've cleared out everything. So like true hell diving professionals, we enter the Pelican one at a time, covering each other like we've been doing the whole game, and we get the hell off this planet. Well, that's the run, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've learned something. I do think the recoilless rifle is kind of a slept-on pick right now. I know it's not super flashy, and I'm not gonna lie, it's not as effective as the auto cannon at just straight killing everything. But it does have a role, and as long as you play around a teammate, it's extremely effective. And as you can see, just by walking around supporting S3 with my recoilless, we were able to full clear the map, and we never died once. S3 and I, we went deathless this run, and D2 did as well. So this was a true team of hell diving professionals, and this is what I hope y'all can strive to do. It's not that hard, just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of faith in your team. And if you just do that, you can get those outstanding patriotisms even on Helldive. Until next time, Commissar Kai, signing out.